Okay, in today's video, once again, we're going to play one of my favorite physics games, and that is Will It Accelerate? And in this case, it's really Will They Accelerate? Because in this situation, we have the inclined plane, the pulley, we have object M1, which is on the inclined plane. There is no friction between object M1 and the inclined plane. Then we have a string. The string leads up the inclined plane, over the pulley, down the other side of the pulley, and at the other end of the string, we have another object, object M2. And we would like to know, are these two objects going to accelerate? Now, in a previous video, actually in two previous videos, I showed you how to actually calculate the acceleration of a system like this with and without friction. And you can actually link to those two videos right here if you would like to. But in today's video, we're going to look at a little bit more conceptual understanding of why these objects will or will not accelerate. Now, if they're going to accelerate, there's really two possibilities. There is acceleration in the positive direction. The positive direction means that M1 would move up the inclined plane and M2 would move down. Or we could have negative acceleration. Now, negative acceleration isn't really like acceleration less than zero. It's really negative acceleration is in the negative direction and positive acceleration is in the positive direction. So for negative acceleration, M1 would move down the inclined plane and M2 would move up. Now, if we're going to have acceleration in either direction, we need to have an unbalanced force. Unbalanced forces cause acceleration. Acceleration is caused by unbalanced forces. Now, if we're going to have unbalanced forces, if we want to see if we're going to have unbalanced forces, we should draw in all the forces that are acting on M1 and M2. These are the forces that are acting on M1. There is the force due to gravity, M1g. There's the normal force from the surface of the inclined plane. And then there is a tension force from the string. Those are the three forces that are acting on M1. There are two forces acting on M2. There's the weight of M2, the force due to gravity. And then there's the tension force because M2 is also attached to that string. Okay, now you will notice, we've got to do one more thing. You'll notice M1G is not acting for M1 in either the X direction or the Y direction. So you should remember that we have to break M1G into its X and its y components. And we do that like this. This is the y component of m1g, which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the normal force. And then there's a portion of m1 that's acting down the inclined plane along the x-axis, and that is m1gx. Okay? So those are all the forces and m1g broken into its components. Now we want to see where we might get an unbalanced force from. In order to do that, I'm going to get rid of all the forces that are not involved in the acceleration of these two objects. In a sense, I'm going to kind of look at summing up the forces that affect the acceleration of these two objects from a point of view of Newton's second law. The first force, which is not involved in the acceleration, is the normal force acts in the y direction. The object is going to move in the, M, in the x direction. Also, M1G. Now, we're not really getting rid of M1G. We really didn't get rid of M1G, but we broke it into its X and its Y components, so we're not really using M1G anymore. And also, M1GY acts in the Y direction. It does not affect the acceleration of M1. Now, the tension forces, you might think they are important because they're acting along the string, but because this is this inelastic string and Newton's third law, these two forces, the tension forces, are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. So therefore, they are not involved in the acceleration of these two objects. And that leaves us only two forces, M1GX and M2. So we have M1GX pointing in the negative direction. And we have M2G pointing in the positive direction. There's only two forces. It's kind of like a tug of war between M1GX and M2G. Whichever of those two, M1GX or M2G is greater, then the object will move in that direction. If M1GX is greater, then these two objects will accelerate in the negative direction. If M2G is greater, then these two objects will accelerate in what we have called the positive direction. Now, let's look at one or actually two examples. In the first example, M1 is 6 kilograms. M2 is 2, 
the angle of inclination of the inclined plane is 30 degrees, and we're just going to round g to 10. Now let's calculate m1gx and m2g and see, will these objects accelerate in the negative or the positive direction? So m1gx we calculate as m1g sine theta. So that's m1 times g times the sine of 30, which is 1 half. So that means that in this case, m1gx is 30 newtons. M2g is just simply m2 times g, which is 20. So there's a force from m1gx that's 30 down. This one is 20 in the other directions, and that in the other direction. And that means that in this case, these two objects are going to accelerate in the negative direction. Okay, now let's look at kind of the opposite example, and let's see, maybe we changed a couple things. Okay, all we did was we changed m1 from 6 to 3 kilograms. Now let's see what happens. m1gx is m1g times the sine of theta, so that's m1 times g, which is 3 times 10 is 30, times the sine of theta, which is 1 half. That means that m1gx has now decreased by half to 15. We left m2 the same. Well, m2 is 2 times g is 10, which is 20. And that means that we've decreased really the m1gx, left m2 the same. m2 is now greater than m1gx. And these two objects are now going to accelerate in the positive direction. OK? So that's how you can think about these things conceptually. Of course, it's good to be able to put the numbers in the equations and come up with the acceleration, but it's really good to kind of understand also the conditions that will cause things to accelerate in the negative direction, in the positive direction, or maybe to not accelerate at all. Okay? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful, interesting, and informative. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. You will get all of my interesting physics videos. Then after you subscribe, you can give me a thumbs up for this video. And then after that, you could even leave me a nice positive comment. Okay? Thank you very much for watching. And we will see you in the next video.